Welcome to the module on change notifications with Microsoft Graph. Hi, I'm Andrew Connell. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the area of Microsoft 365 development. I have a lot of experience with SharePoint development, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, developing add-ins for Microsoft Office, as well as developing applications for Microsoft Identity, including Azure Active Directory. This video is the first in a series of videos on this Microsoft Learning module. This video is also part of a playlist that includes all the videos that are associated with this module so you can watch them in order. The playlist and all its included videos are associated with a Microsoft Learning module that includes hands-on lab exercises and additional resources. Check the notes for this video and the associated playlist for more information and where to find the Microsoft Learning module. Okay, let's get started. In this module, you'll learn how to work with change notifications, also known as webhooks, and track changes, also known as Delta Query, in the Microsoft Graph. In this section, you're going to learn how Microsoft Graph fits into the larger Microsoft 365 platform, and then we're going to learn how to create a .NET Core web API that will be used to create and receive an HTTP POST request from Microsoft Graph. The Microsoft 365 developer vision focuses on the user experience and their data. And as a developer, you can bring your application into the user experience with over 1.2 billion users of Office worldwide. This is a huge opportunity to provide a window into your application to connect their data to your application. There are currently over 850 million events created each month and a total of over 400 petabytes of data stored in the service that can add value to your users. The Microsoft Graph is the gateway to your data in the Microsoft Cloud, as you can see. The Microsoft Cloud includes multiple services and data types that we can take advantage of from Office 365, and it's all considered part of the Microsoft 365 platform. Developers can integrate the signed in user's email, calendar, contacts, and tasks into custom apps. We can work with content in SharePoint lists and files and document libraries and in OneDrive, channels and content within Microsoft Teams and users within Azure Active Directory. There are many different services that developers can take advantage of in their custom apps. Many of these services have their own APIs that developers can interact with. However, this can be challenging to go to each of these individual services with their individual endpoints. Each API may have its own permission model, which means that they can have individual access control configurations. Different endpoints for each service mean our custom application will need to obtain an access token from Azure AD for each of the different endpoints. One of the benefits of Microsoft Graph is that it serves as a proxy endpoint to all of these other services. Microsoft Graph encompasses things such as Office 365, Windows 10, Enterprise Mobility, and Security, and it brings all of these different services under one unified endpoint, graph.microsoft.com. The advantage to using Microsoft Graph is that it allows developers to have just a single endpoint, a resource, which means you're only going to need a single access token to authenticate the different services. Each service still has its own individual permissions so that everything is still secured in an individual way. A single endpoint makes it easier for developers to build applications. Microsoft Graph also enables easy navigation of entities and the relationships between these entities. And while there are many different Microsoft 365 services, such as OneDrive for Business or Outlook for contacts and uh, calendars, these different entities are related to each other. And these relationships are in the Microsoft Graph, which makes it easy to navigate from one entity to another, even if it's across different underlying endpoints. Microsoft Graph supports two options to authenticate. One option is with Azure Active Directory only or a work and school account. And the other option is converged auth, which means that you can either use Azure AD or a Microsoft account. And in this case, you can use the exact same code in the Microsoft Graph, the same endpoints and the same SDK to get my files, either if they're in OneDrive Consumer or in OneDrive for Business. And the same is true for calendar, contacts, and email in Outlook.com or in Office 365. And the nice thing about this is that the data that you fetch is all dependent on the login of the user that signed in. So you don't have to write special code or use different APIs or endpoints to get the data for consumer accounts or for business accounts. As previously stated, Microsoft Graph supports both Microsoft accounts and Azure AD accounts, also referred to as work and school accounts. Nothing in Microsoft Graph's APIs or SDKs is unique to the sign-in process. The code is the same and the sign-in determines which services in Microsoft Graph will access. If the user is signed in with a Microsoft account, the files endpoint maps to the OneDrive consumer endpoint, and while the work and school sign-ins map to OneDrive for business. This is just but one example. 
to determine which account type your app supports, or if it supports both, you set a specific setting in the associated Azure AD app in the Azure AD Admin Center. Now let's focus on a specific feature that Microsoft Graph has to offer developers, change notifications. Change notifications enable applications to be alerted when data changes or is created in Microsoft Graph. When the wanted entry is created, updated or deleted, Microsoft Graph will submit an HTTP post to the specified endpoint. And your custom endpoint listens for these changes and acts on them based on the logic defined by your business requirements. So what can you get notifications for? You can get notifications on messages, events, contacts, users, groups, conversations, OneDrive files, alerts, and more. This allows you to stay up to date and in sync with data that is accessible via Microsoft Graph. It also allows you to avoid implementing polling infrastructure where you can submit requests to Microsoft Graph at regular intervals to get the most recent changes. And instead, you can go back to Microsoft Graph asking for changes when a notification is received by your application. This way, you'll never miss a change to data that is exposed or was accessible via Microsoft Graph. Let's look at a couple of different uh, example notification scenarios. When an email is received, you want to translate it from its native language to another language to make it easier for the consumer to read that mail. When a new user is added to your organization, maybe you want to automatically create an account for that user in your corporate third party time tracking system and send them an email alerting them that their new account has been set up. How would you implement these scenarios with change notifications? You first need to create an app that will host a web API to listen for notifications. And this will be the component that not only is going to trigger the request to create the subscription, but also manage renewals and receive and respond to notifications that are received from Microsoft Graph. Your application is notified of this activity by creating a subscription with Microsoft Graph. The subscription tells Microsoft Graph what entities that you want to receive notifications about and the address of your web API to post them to. Developers must renew subscriptions for notifications as needed as all subscriptions have an expiration time that's associated with them. If the subscription is not renewed, it will eventually expire and you'll have to keep track of the subscription and make sure that you keep it renewed if you want to keep being notified. Change notifications that your app receives from Microsoft Graph can allow you to track changes of entities if you need to replicate data in your own system. Now the development experience for creating an app that receives change notifications, it can be challenging because you do have to stand up a well-known and accessible HTTPS secured endpoint to receive notifications. There's a free tool in Grok that simplifies the developer experience. It creates a temporary well-known endpoint that redirects your developer environment. Once you start your local web server to host your application, you start in Grok in a separate process. NGROC creates a public HTTPS secured endpoint that points to our local web server. And once both of these are running, Microsoft Graph can submit HTTP post requests to the NGROC URL, which will be routed down to our local web server. 